Fun fact! Canon actually matters. And even children's cartoons know this. See? This show means a lot to me, and your version ruins Torino's whole character. You can't sacrifice five seasons of growth for cheap spectacle. And it's almost comical that Disney owns that show, by the way. But contradicting the canon with plot holes or undermining it is a problem, and I've actually seen people insist that it isn't for some reason. So just in case you don't actually know why, it turns the invested time into wasted time. But what exactly is a plot hole? That's used a lot. What does it mean? Well, as a basic rundown, Here's our hero, and our villain, and the plot says there's a wall between them. So our heroes do a whole training arc to go around the wall. It's very complicated, you wouldn't understand. But here's the bad guy stopping them, but they give up when the hero shoots the villain. Uh, where did the wall go? Huh? Wall? Now I've made it pretty obvious here and it's not usually this obvious, but this is what a plot hole is. I've contradicted a part of the established world and plot. At best, this could be a minor issue. Someone says you have to take a right at the split and your characters take a left. Someone misspoke somewhere. It's a little disturbing if that makes it into the final cut, but it's overall not going to kill your entire movie. A small forgotten little piece of the puzzle that is otherwise inconsequential to the final story or the outcome. But if it's a central driving plot, then you've done real damage. Our first story had a wall that was central to it. Without that wall, there would be no actual conflict. You're not only not putting good effort into making your story, but you're saying they're too stupid to notice. By dropping this otherwise central piece of the story, you are essentially saying that the audience would never notice, and you're just hoping that they're too busy looking at the jingling keys you're dangling in front of them to actually care about the story. And this works retroactively too. Imagine your hero goes through a huge amount of effort to solve an issue, and is fighting the enemy for hours, eventually, right there, at the peak of defeat, right as he's about to be destroyed, he pulls up a blow up the bad guy button and pushes it. A button that he could have pushed at any time, cost him nothing to push, and in no way compromises what he's trying to achieve by pushing it. Not doing that at the start means that the character themselves refuse to solve the issue for no other reason than to force the story to happen. And with no other reason not to do it, there's no point in any of the struggle that they went through. But a plot hole is not to be confused with a plot contrivance, however. A plot contrivance is something that could happen, but is unlikely. If the writer is stuck for pushing the plot along, they might lean on these. These can be relatively minor issues unless you do it for either major things, or it's so unlikely that it's just plain not believable, or it's the only thing that's pushing the plot forward, at which point it becomes deus ex machina simply forcing the heroes to win. While it's not completely impossible that the enemy would have a USB drive that has all of his plans on it and would loudly talk about it at the table across from our hero, it is remarkably unbelievable that that would happen or that the character would be that stupid to let it happen. And if the character's that stupid and that much chance is giving our hero the success, then there's really no tension because you know the writer's just gonna force it with no kind of causal relation to the hero. Not to mention the hero is under mind as a character because the hero didn't do anything to achieve the victory. The victory was achieved because the bad guy was useless, not because the hero was useful. Imagine if a villain with no reason to let the hero live just left them alive in the same room with them with access to two incredibly powerful weapons. Depending on the circumstance, that would undermine the established character and be a massive contrivance that allows the hero to win. But a plot hole can be a real problem when it's the central premise for the entire thing. In the Tomorrow War, it would be fair to say that they can't just prevent the future from happening. That could exist in the suspension of disbelief. They never tried to alter the future or stop it from happening in the first place, so you simply assume that doing so would be a contradiction and they're afraid of paradoxes or whatever. Bear in mind, time travel is a bad idea to fuck with as you're almost 100% end up contradicting yourself, but everyone acts like the war is lost because they can't get the MacGuffin fluid to the future from the past. 
that they have it in, but they can't wait for some reason? Put it in a warehouse. But instead, they go to where the aliens emerged and decide to kill them before the war. Well, there goes your fucking suspension of disbelief defense. If that was a viable option from the start, why wouldn't they try that first? It's simultaneously making the entire story not matter, while also spitting in the viewer's face, presuming that they're just mind-numbingly stupid and wouldn't have thought of that. That's when a movie goes from, meh, it's bad, oh well, to I'm angry. When it's actively calling me stupid for watching it. When it is presuming that there is no possible way I could have ever seen this massive hole. And you can can your, but then there wouldn't be a story bullshit. Because that would imply that it couldn't have been done better. In a world where you make up the rules to your magic or your time travel system, because we have no evidence of either, sticking to them is the bare minimum. You made the rules. And if your rules say, well, they could have done that at any time anyway, then why wouldn't they? Why would that not be the first thing they try? They never mentioned any reason why you wouldn't do that. And the reason they think they're going to get away with not putting any real effort into the writing, and I stand by that there was zero effort put into the writing of The Tomorrow War, is because they expect you to just mindlessly consume it, to just drift through the movie and not think about anything. They put shiny, flashy things on the screen and a bunch of quippy dialogue and dangled the keys in front of you making jingly noises. Look, look, it's so shiny. And they presumed you would just not think about the movie at all. And that's a terrible way to make a piece of media. These massive glaring plot holes mean that they don't expect you to watch the movie. They just want you to idly sit there while they shovel graphics into your face, hoping that if they pile enough shitty movies on top of your face, the money will leak out of your wallet for it. Canon plot, consistency of character are all incredibly important because it shows that they put effort behind their story. It shows that there was someone who put effort into making something creative. And if I'm expected to pay for something, I also expect that effort was put into making it. Which is why it's mind-boggling that there are people who still insist that affecting the canon doesn't matter all that much because you're just a whiny fanboy or something. It's ridiculous. A writer needs to be careful what they introduce into the canon and what they make canon throughout their story for fear of retroactively making the conflict not an issue or undermining any issues that they have. In High Guardian Spice, they canonize that you have spheres that let you live forever. Therefore, they can never have someone die of old age. In the Star Wars sequels, Force Ghosts can interact with things physically and even use the Force. This was never established previously, so the suspension of disbelief led us to believe that they couldn't, so it made sense why they weren't helping. But now that they can do that, there's absolutely no excuse as to why they aren't. And in the Tomorrow War, like I said, if you can just stop the problem from being a problem before it's a problem, why was there ever a problem? Don't insult your audience's ability to pay attention to your own story. You're writing the story, you should have pride in it. And try to have believable set pieces as to how things move forward. No one ever said you couldn't like a shitty movie. I was always fine with that. I made a whole goddamn video on it. Bad practices should be recognized as bad. If I hammered together some 2x4s and sticks to make a chair and demanded you pay the same for it as an incredibly finely made, handcrafted, and carved wooden chair, you'd look at me like I'm a moron. Why on earth would you pay the same amount for that? I put no effort into making it good. So when a movie contradicts itself or just forces the problem forward because they couldn't think of a better way to write it, they are doing exactly that. They are selling you a cheap 2 by four hammered together chair for the same price as an artisan crafted one and telling you there is no difference and you're just being nitpicky. They are calling you stupid and you shouldn't be okay with that. Like, share, follow, comment, subscribe or I'll eat your kidneys while you're asleep and there's no reason you can't like a bad story or a poorly written story. I have watched every episode of Naruto, every episode of Shippuden and I intend to watch the rest of Boruto. It is a horribly written story and me having fun along the way has nothing to do with that.
The odd bad piece of media that you watch because it's a fun ride is fine, but you should be asking for a bit of quality in what you consume, because they will very much try to feed you the cheapest garbage they can for the highest price that they can if they think that you'll let them get away with it. But if you don't agree on these points, I am curious as to the arguments against. Feel free to go down to the comments and let me know. Or if you truly believe that canon does not matter outside of surreal or absurdist humor, then by all means, go down there as well and be entertainingly angry. Also, could we check in on the animators behind Big City Greens? I'm just seeing some concerning things is all. Next, we ship all our materials to our overseas animation studio. Make it move! Make it move! All I'm asking is that we send someone in before they start drawing summoning circles.